Hey guys, welcome to the first video in a series about A-level geography. We're going to be talking about shore platforms. So here we have a vertical cliff face made out of a hard rock such as chalk or limestone. Here we have the high water mark where the sea is at its highest at high tide. At the base of the cliff, marine processes of erosion such as hydraulic action, pounding and abrasion will occur at high tide. This will, over time, undercut the base of the cliff and create a wave cut notch. Um, here I just am redrawing the line because I did it a bit too high, so it would be a bit lower because it needs the kind of wave to uh, erode the base of the cliff. So this overhang above the wave cut notch is going to be impacted by sub-aerial processes of weathering as well as mass movements such as rockfall because it's a 70 degree angle or more cliff face. Eventually this cliff overhang will fall into the water um, through a mass movement which will probably be a rockfall um, and this will result in the cliff to recede a little bit. So a little wave cut platform here will form. I accidentally wrote WCN as wave cut notch, but it's a wave cut platform here, otherwise known as short platform. Then this process of undercutting and rock fall of the cliff face will re result in the cliff face to continue receding and this shore platform to increase in length. So when the overhang falls into the sea, um, there'll be material on the shore platform and this will get taken away but also erode and kind of wear down through attrition and it will generally build up on the shore platform. So over uh, many repeated iterations of this process the cliff will recede and you'll get a nice gently sloping shore platform um, forming at the base of the cliff. So over time as the shore platform increases in length it will become shallower, reducing the energy of the waves, and also the build-up of rock material from the cliff will also increase the friction and decrease the energy. So generally, the notch at the bottom of the cliff will be um, will kind of form slower. Everything will happen slower and um, generally erode less, and gradually this will stop altogether. And this is at around um, 500 metres from the low tide mark. Um, because at that point there's just not enough energy to erode anymore and yeah you can just see I drew on the high water mark which is where that little line is and um, the low water mark at the base of the shore platform as I'm just showing here um, so yeah the area that's exposed between the high water and low water is subject to subaerial processes um, especially carbonation as it's generally going to be something calcium carbonate based like chalk or limestone um, so this will kind of make it quite uneven and bumpy um, yeah there'll be other things as well like uh, the other weathering processes but now i'm going to talk about the effect of tidal range on the profile of a shore platform so first here is a shore platform with a high tidal range, so the low water mark and the high water mark are quite far apart. So here, the water will be moving quite fast up the uh, up and down the shore platform and won't be staying for long at each point because it's a big difference in high tide and low tide marks. So this means that where the low water mark is, there may be a bit of a kind of undercutting, but it won't be much, and maybe one at the high water mark. But generally, there won't really be any significant erosion along the uh, shore platform because it's moved too fast. So the profile of a shore platform with a low tidal range is going to look different. So because there's a low tidal range there's not much difference between low and high tide marks so the water will spend more time at each kind of point along the shore platform um, especially the high and low water marks um, and will have more time to kind of uh, use those marine processes to erode it so here we'll have a small cliff near the low water mark 
um, along the shore platform there may be more kind of marine erosion going on there because there's more time and at the high water mark um, we might have a small kind of undercut and a ridge here um, although when the shore platform's already got to this length then there won't be that much more undercutting or anything. So yeah that's pretty much it. Something I didn't mention was um, if the climate greatly reduces in temperature and the sea level drops a great deal then shore platforms will become raised beaches and the cliffs behind them will become relic cliffs so they'll kind of be a flat shore platform um, and then the sea a lot lower so yeah thanks for watching see you next time goodbye